How's it going, fellow Detroit Red Wings fans? The NHL free agency kicked off on Wednesday after the draft on July 28th. We did make a video talking about free agency and who the Red Wings could go after, mostly pertaining to the big fish in this year's free agency pond, talking about the Red Wings possibly going after or signing Alec Martinez, Zach Hyman, Thomas Tatar, Jamie Alexiak, or Philip Grubauer. Now, none of those players did end up signing with the Red Wings. It was definitely a much more calm free agency for Detroit, at least compared to last year's. That being said, we got some good underrated signings, and I kind of want to dissect each signing. So the Red Wings went out and acquired Ryan Murphy, Brian Lashoff, Jordan Osterley, P.S. Sitter, and Luke Witkowski, which is probably my second favorite signing. And then just because it was in the same time period, we're going to talk about the Mitchell Stevens trade as well. We also lost Darren Helm, Alex Biega, Luke Glendening, Dylan McElrath, Joe Hicketts, and while he was also traded away, Jonathan Bernier, and did not give qualifying offers to Evgeny Svechnikov and a couple other small RFAs in the Red Wings organization. We've resigned Tyler Bertuzzi, Jacob Vrana, Chase Pearson, Michael Rasmussen, Mark Stahl, Kelvin Pickard, Taro Hirose, and Gustav Lindstrom as of the time of this recording. So let's start with the Murphy, Runoff, and Lashoff signings, because they are all signed for roughly the same reasons. Runoff was signed to a one-year contract worth $850,000, Murphy was signed to a one-year contract worth $800,000, and Lashoff was signed to a one-year contract worth $750,000. All are pretty much AHL guys who can serve in a call-up situation when injuries start to pile up and will be able to hold their own in the NHL but more importantly, make the Grand Rapids Griffins a more competitive team and make a more competitive environment for young prospects coming up in the system, especially Murphy. 28 years old, standing at 5 feet 11 inches, 185 pounds, a former first round pick by the Carolina Hurricanes that just never really panned out. But he has been able to produce at the AHL level, playing with the Henderson Silver Knights in the AHL last season. He earned 5 goals, 22 assists for 27 points in 37 games played which was good enough for third on the team in points and first in points for defensemen in the league. He could possibly surprise some people if he gets called up, but don't expect him to rack up the points for years to come in Detroit. Jordan Osterley is a similar signing, but more to help out with the NHL squad. His experience at the NHL level will make it easier for the Red Wings to put him in the lineup and not have to worry about goals being scored when injuries do start to rise and in the off chance Sider doesn't make the opening night roster. Eisenman has said he doesn't want Sider being a healthy scratch. He wants Sider to be playing big minutes in Grand Rapids if he does not make the team. So it's kind of also an insurance signing in case issues come up on defense. I want to save the biggest signing for last, but the Red Wings signing Luke Wachowski has to be my favorite signing. I can't imagine a lot of fans don't know who the Holland native is. Wachowski played on the Red Wings during the 2017-18 season and during the 2018-19 season as well. Now this 6 foot 2, 216 pound beast didn't exactly rack up the points like you would expect Bertuzzi, Vrana, or Larkin to do. He left highlight reels full of big hits and fights, made to get the team and crowd pumped and going again. He's also an enforcer to help protect the younger players and allow them to do their thing. Not to mention he was a captain twice with the Crunch in the AHL and during his college years at Western Michigan University. So he also will be a good role model and leader if he does go down to Grand Rapids and help make the team more competitive. Regardless if he's in the AHL or the NHL, there should be some fun highlights coming this season. So the last free agent signing we're going to talk about today is the big catch, and that is P.S. Suter. We signed Suter to a two-year contract worth $6.5 million, averaging a $3.25 million cap hit per year. This is very much a prove-it kind of contract. Sutter was signed by the Chicago Blackhawks last season as an undrafted free agent. We're hearing 14 goals, 13 assists for 27 points in 55 games played. Not bad for a rookie season. He did also score a hat-trick against the Detroit Red Wings. Now, let's retrace our steps. He was an undrafted free agent that played for the Gulf Storm during the 2013-14 and the 2014-15 season. You know who else was on that team at that time? Tyler Bertuzzi and Robbie Fabry. Not only were all three on the team, they all played on the same line. It's possible that they are looking to put a line of Zadina, Vrana, and Larkin together as most likely the top line, and see if putting Bertuzzi, Fabri, and Sutter together will spark some offense. After all, Sutter and Fabri are goal scorers. Both can shoot well, and Sutter does have a knack for being in the right spot at the right time around the net. 
with the junkyard dog style of play that could fit well with setting up plays for those guys, not to mention being able to score goals himself if he wanted to. All right, we talked about the free agent signings. Let's talk about the trade. So on July 30th, the Red Wings traded away a 2022 sixth round draft pick to the Tampa Bay Lightning in exchange for Mitchell Stevens, a former Iserman selection taken in the second round of the 2015 NHL entry draft. He stands at six feet, 194 pounds. He's 24 years old. Stevens has put time between the AHL and the NHL the last couple seasons. He didn't produce a lot in the NHL, but his role was very limited. Considering he was playing on a team with Kucherov, Point, Stamkos, Palat, and many, many more, it makes sense he wouldn't be given a lot of time on ice unless he was producing a lot. So the Red Wings acquiring Stevens gives him a chance to prove himself. He will be in the bottom six of the lineup unless he starts to produce and show the Red Wings he needs to be in the top six. It also means the Red Wings don't have to force one of their center prospects into being a bottom six center instead of playing top line minutes in the AHL like Valeno or having to call up an AHL center, that would be a liability. Overall, it's not a bad free agency class. Somewhat underrated, some of the players are low risk, high reward players, and a lot will help support the team and help develop the prospects, making the team better in the future. What do you think of the Red Wings free agency? Who should have they signed? How do you think Sutter will do joining a rebuilding Red Wings team? Let us know down below. Red Wing Nation was designed to be a community of Red Wings fans that can come together and talk about all things Red Wings. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. That way we make more content that you like. And lastly, don't be afraid to subscribe. That way you get notified when we upload a video. And until next time, lights out in the red light district.